Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Mm, yeah, housing bubble. It's exciting. Yeah, big shorts, big little shorts, shorts <laughs> and all the shorts in between. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watch Big Shorts. Big, the big shorts. shorts. Get the it? Big Short, it's, shorts. It's short, but it's big. Mm-hmm. How could it be? They're just an incredibly large pair of pants. Michael, how are you? I found something really interesting. The whole housing market is propped up on these bad loans. They will fail. The housing market is rock solid. It's a time bomb. Uh, before we get started, big old thank you to Hombre. Big short Hombre. thanks. Big short thank you. Hombre, our Patreon producer who mm-hmm. asked us to watch the movie The Big Short. Uh, and a, a movie from what? When, when was this made? 2015, I believe. Mm, okay. Yeah. It's based off a book of the same name, but uh, the it was like the big short and then a bunch of bullshit. You know, books are... Yeah, books, yeah, books like to add all kinds of bullshit. Like yeah. 50 or 60 words after the title. So you, you, three words. Yeah. Maybe four. Cut it yeah. off. Yeah, the big short. Simple. Uh, this, was a, this was adapted by Adam McKay right after fucking... Um, the nice guys or the other guys the other the guys, other guys yeah. which you could really tell just the ending of the other guys is one of the most jarring endings um you remember the that I, ending credits no actually i don't the ending credits of the of the other guys is like a rant on being the banking industry it's like a slideshow about how they fuck you over oh you're right and it's, yeah it's clear that he was like already researching this making that film like that's that's got like it just bled into that film a little bit um you're right i hadn't made that connection before that it's there's like a weird amount of financial crime in the other guys yeah and he apparently made this with on the deal that he would make another anchor man which i think is funny because this is basically he at the time he was like broad comedy will ferrell guy yeah he uh, did he did anchorman he did talladega nights yeah um, he did the other guys that we were talking about yeah and then he dumped this on our lap and then was just like i'm gonna be also the guy who does succession and the guy who like goes after rich people uh and this movie is <sighs> this is a a, a a very interesting movie because it's yeah. not really a movie it's more like a documentary with a lot of reenactments it's almost like a multimedia presentation yes uh it how how do, how do you like this movie? I like this movie okay, actually. Um, yes, I, I think I think this movie is is pretty good. Um, yeah, and I think I, I'm hedging it so much because Adam McKay's serious films got very tiring for me very quickly. Um, Did you watch? I, oh, sorry. What What were you gonna say? Did you watch Succession? I have not. Okay. Um, but, um, I think the big short is the best of his three films, uh, his three serious films, quote unquote, or I guess his three important films, I guess I'm including in that big short vice and don't look up. Although don't look up. I wouldn't really even group with vice or, or the big short, honestly. For sure. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it's actually pretty good and it's, it does a good, I think it's, it's actually kind of an important film too, because it explains something that is as the movie tells us is so densely and intentionally complicated yes it's designed for us to not understand it and it does a good job at that Mm -hmm. um yeah my view on mckay i i actually haven't seen vice or don't look up and i should vice is pretty okay i think vice 
is tipping it starts to tip like uh, like i said yeah. I, I got tired of his serious movies pretty quickly i think vice tips too far in the uh, in in the in the wrong direction um of sort like sort of i don't want to say self-righteousness but it's kind of that it's kind of like being in love with your own cleverness right um but i think i still think vice is pretty pretty decent it's worth watching yeah succession you should definitely watch oh for sure i was just gonna say real quick if for no other reason that you probably forgot a lot of the shit that went on during the 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 bush administration oh for sure this is so long ago it's funny. This is when we need a new Bush movie, like not 2007, not that W movie. Like right now is when we need a Bush movie where everybody's talking about him like a sweet old man. Uh, yeah. So I guess Vice kind of served that purpose. Um, I, I point out Succession just because I, th- I think Succession is um, his top tier kind of work with this stuff, which is why you should probably see it. Mm-hmm. I've, uh, seen, I've seen the pilot. Okay. Yeah, it's it can be a bit uh, it's a little cruel of a show, but it's I it's very good. Um this is all to say that rewatching this movie cuz I loved this movie when it came out, rewatching it made me realize who McKay who's what shoes he's filling. And that is Sorkin. He's mm-hmm. Sorkining. Yeah. Um this is a dad He's film. like he's like vamping Sorkin in the big yeah. short. Yeah, this is a dad film like dad sorkin film and i i think um it uh it really like clicked in my head once i realized that that it's like i like his work but it can be a little sorkin-y which is to say it can be a little cheesy um Mm -hmm. for example in this film there's a lot of moments of characters saying the thing um there's that's i did notice that a lot I've seen this movie twice. This is the second time I watched it. I noticed it a lot this watch through where a character will just say who they are and what they're thinking. Right. Or they'll do the big Sorkin moment where like they celebrate that they make money and Brad Pitt goes, hey, do you realize you just bet against the American people? You know, those those really patriotic, pure, like idealistic Sorkin kind of statements um, that they they. uh that I, I, I feel like we're probably, you know, manufactured for this movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Although they, and that's, I mean, they, they were probably because they, they might be like a distillation or encapsulation of that guy's like thoughts and politics. Um, whether or not he said those those words in that moment, I don't I'm not sure I believe. But, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing that strikes me about this film is that. I, I actually skimmed through the book, The Big Short. I, I read articles about the comparisons. This is pretty accurate, um, which is to say that like the names have been changed um, and a lot of it has been condensed and, and swapped around. Stuff like when he goes and talks to that stripper, uh, she's saying stuff that like was like, multiple you know, people uh, said. multiple people. Yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. Um. What I do want to point out, though, is that this style of filmmaking, this... So, I, I, I don't know if we need to explain it for people who haven't we, seen it. It's very we, meta. We might. It's shot kind of like The Office. And yeah, that, it's that shot sort of like a like, documentary. Yeah, that c- cinema verite sort of thing with, like, yeah. It's a mockumentary that's nonfiction. To which you wonder, well, then just make a documentary, right? Like it's framed like a like the the editing, the the um the the structure is of a documentary. Mm-hmm. Like that first like conversation with uh, Christian Bale's character, where he's talking about who he is. Like that feels so documentary that if it wasn't Christian Bale, if it was a no name actor, you would assume you're watching a real interview. And it's shot the way a documentary would do those inserts of having his office. It, it does the things where it like goes down to the, the, the homes that are being affected at the exact moment a documentary would. So that's what, that's what's so weird about this. And, and, and then it stops and it will explain things in really fun ways. They have Margot Robbie show up and explain hard to understand concepts. They do that a few times. Um, where they'll stop and like put a graph on screen. They'll they'll have Ryan Gosling just explain shit, right? And then they'll have moments in the film where something will happen and they'll look at the camera and they'll go, it didn't actually quite happen this way. It actually, this happened. Or they'll say like, no shit, the person actually did that. 
Yeah, those and were it, those were my favorite moments when when they would point out it didn't quite happen this way. We, this is what happened, and then this is what happened with this guy. But we just combined them together in this scene because we got to keep things moving. Right. But and then also in the scene where like Steve Carell stands up and he's like, he really did that. He really said that. He really took that call. Right. I looked it up. He did. He really did do that. Um, almost I, the exact I, same way. I, I trust the filmmaker enough that when Ryan Gosling turns to the screen and tells us that I trusted it, I was like, well, that's probably true. But that's what I was getting to. That's oh, what's so dangerous. That's true. Is that yeah. any, any, this style that he's introduced, because I would say Adam McKay is introducing a new way to tell a nonfiction story with this it's movie. Like a, you, said I, he's, you said he's filling Sorkin's shoes. He's kind of a combination of Sor- Sorkin and Michael Moore. Yes. Um, and I'm not saying someone, I'm sure someone did it before him, but he popularized it. This could be used to be extremely manipulative and dishonest because for example, the shots where they look at the camera and go, this didn't actually happen this way. The thing is a lot of it didn't happen that way. For example, Steve Carell's character is based off another guy. His name isn't Mark Baum. Um, I forget what his real name is. Um, his brother didn't kill himself. Um, he didn't even have a, his brother didn't die. Like there, there was another tragedy in his life. Uh, like little things like that have been tweaked. A lot of it. Um, there are a lot would, of changes. I would, I would assume something like that is to protect the guy's identity. Cause if they change his name, but they include such a specific personal life tragedy that would help you figure out who he is. Apparently he just didn't want, he does have a tragic thing in his life. He didn't want that to be in the movie. So I they changed I it. totally understand that. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. No, that's what I mean. This is all done in good faith. Yeah, like, that's I'm not true, saying but you're that right. this movie right. is dishonest. They're I'm saying that kind of doing the thing. Right. That by a movie doing these, like, it's like very manipulative to hi- not to like announce that you told a lie while not announcing all the other lies. Right. That's to true. make the audience feel like, oh, what we're watching is real, but it's not real. It's actors. It's, it's, it's um, a fabrication completely. And I just think that's really interesting. Um, yeah. Because I don't think it's a bad thing about this film. I think it can be used in a very bad way, though, if, if it took off. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's a rising little bit of American splendor. Oh, yeah. Where they would mix the, lo- the, the real archive footage of, I forget the man's name, uh, on his, like, talk show appearances on like david letterman and stuff they would show the actual footage but in between it would be paul giamatti and all the actors playing this guy in right. the in the dramatic scenes in between the really really manipulative version of it that i loved was the movie the fourth kind with yep. mila jovovich yep. where they they had mila jovovich and and a bunch of other actors um do reenactments of real footage and they would show the real footage w- between the reenactments the, the thing that they didn't tell people is that the reenactment or the real footage was also actors. So it was completely fictionalized. Yeah. And I had met people who went, I can't believe that really happened. And it was like, no, they took, they faked both. No, it because, super didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing about movies is that you can lie. There's no legal reason you can't lie. Right. It's the beginning of Fargo. You know, exactly. this is based on a true, st- it absolutely is not. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same with a magician. A magician says like, oh, we don't know each other. Or There's no camera tricks. Who, why are you trusting them? Their yeah. entire job is to lie. Yep. Um, so like, that's, that's what's, I think, really interesting at the heart of this movie is that movies are a lie. And this is a very sleazy way to tell a lie. Um, it just happens that most of this actually happened, you know, including the, the more wild things like him asking that question um and them saying like it actually happened i just think that's i don't know it's a really it felt like they paused the most unbelievable moments yes they did make apparently the ending when it's like the the place is almost going to go under that that was dramatized like there wasn't a real big threat there um but again that doesn't that's like we're making a movie. Yeah. Like that's the thing. They're making a movie. They need it to be entertaining. That's why I like went through this after watching it to like figure out what was true or not. Cause like once I realized that like these aren't even the people's names, it started in my head going like, fuck man, like what, 
what is a lie here? Like, how much did he lie? And I was, yeah, pleased to see, like, not enough for it to, like, break the film or anything. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah, if someone could come along and take this format easily and, I, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, it, it already exists. So. Yeah. It, you could also argue that people could poke holes in this based on that fact, right? Like, because they changed things and then because of that attitude, someone could dismiss the entire film, which, you know, you shouldn't. Sure. If that's a kind of a bad faith approach to it, I think. But yeah, yeah. absolutely. But I mean, that's, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, that's an interesting argument to have because, yeah, it is, it is like a value uh, call, right? It's like, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's okay to, to fudge this detail because it's, it's not really that important. Uh, we got all the, the, the major details, right? Right. And on paper, they're not making a documentary. They're making a movie based on a true story, which gets a lot more leeway, right? Is that yeah. ultimately we, we forgive that. Right. Format. Cause it's still a movie. Yeah. Right. Like we're still, we're still watching Christian Bale and Steve Carell. Yes. And Ryan yes, Gosling, who his his man, I think this is an underrated Ryan Gosling performance because he plays unlikable in it. Yeah, he plays a complete dirtbag in um, with he's he looks so perfectly. His hair is dyed like dark black, which doesn't look good on him at all. No. Um, and he also has like the worst tan, like he has the worst tanning bed tan in the movie. It's so it's it's yes, it's perfect. such it's such a choice. It's so funny. <laughs> and he's 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 not the protagonist. Um I feel like Steve Carell's character is the protagonist, but I'm not I'm not even certain. Um but he's like he's the uh you know, he's the rooster with the guitar. He's telling the story. Yeah. He's got we have basically three main characters. It's him and Christian Bale and Steve Carell. He's like the primary Ryan Gosling's the primary narrator, essentially. Right. Um, the Christian Bale and Steve Carell never talk to the camera. I don't think. I don't think so. They, they, they kind of have moments where you rather, think they are, but yeah. they aren't. They're talking to someone else. Right. Um, so Gosling's the only one that breaks the fourth wall. Well, and then side characters. Will well, side characters will. It. That yeah. Um, it's like it's kind of the way Scorsese does that, right? Where it's like the, the narration. Yeah. It's mostly from Gosling's point of view, but every now and then someone like butts in to correct Gosling a little bit Mm -hmm. or to like, because like he's not a reliable narrator. Um, and it's really playful with that. It's, it's one of my favorite parts about this. Like, and, and then it's playful with being a documentary or being, a narrative where guy is like explaining what's happening to his testicle and a graph comes on screen to explain it. I love those little bits um, (laughs) in there. I love how like weird and um, like messy it is in the editing. Like when they do those montages, they like break the aspect ratio and it looks like a YouTube montage. Yeah. Um, They, the, the, the movie is broken up, I believe in three quotes representing the end of the first act the the midpoint and then the third act and then it does a few montages to show like the passage of time showing like you know major you know milestones the the major events over the intervening years yeah right but it's done in this like weirdly messy way like again on purpose where it's sort of it wants you to know it's breaking all the rules of filmmaking on top of it i think it's also to show how all of this happened under everyone's noses. Right. Part of it is just that we're inundated with so much, uh, particularly during this time period. Um, On top of the fact that, as we sort of mentioned earlier, uh, and the film really gets into this, is the finance world is, specifically at this level, is so intentionally impenetrable. Yeah, uh, like, the, like the big short. It's really hard to explain what that phrase even means. Like, it's, right. Well, it's it's like coded language the way yeah, the mob would use exactly, it. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's it's heavily coded uh, yeah, this, to make it impenetrable. Yeah. This movie is, if we didn't mention following the housing bubble collapse and why it happened. And it sort of. Oh, asked yeah. The I guess question. we didn't mention that. <laughs> I know. And it sort of asked the question of like, who's the blame like it does present a few villains like there's a scene where steve Carell sits across that guy who's a major piece of shit in vegas 
and he does the thing where he says short everything that guy's got afterwards um but it's about the idea of a few select group although in reality there were actually more people who bet against the housing market um and it was unheard of at the time and they were that's shorting the housing market well even basically. and even even that is hard to explain right because how do you bet against the housing market it's like well you buy insurance against the idea that these mortgages will fail and it's like well how is that possible it's like well right. the bank has to agree to to let you do it's it's and it's like layer and layers upon layers of just this impenetrable other world <laughs> Right. So. And then it, it lays out characters who are doing this for wildly different reasons, which I like. Christian Bale is just a number guy. It's implied that he's like on the spectrum a bit. He doesn't understand people. Um, he's 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 like um, it's just a eccentric. Pure, yeah, he's just like a pure like data scientist. Yeah. He's completely and, about the numbers. Right. And he just looks at the numbers and basically realizes that all these people are like going into massive debt on their loans and so on. And he's just like, this is going to, this is going to burst. Um, and he doesn't, he's bad at explaining it. So his bosses have lost faith in him and it's about him like going to the brink, like to the point that like, if this didn't happen, there would be a separate movie just made about him. Him going he, to like, prison. Yeah. yeah. Where he holds everybody's money hostage. Uh, like he, he, he just completely hijacks it insisting like this is going to happen. Um, and there's a scene where he like, it doesn't happen soon enough. And he thinks like, what if I like, it's this, the, the, basically the third act dark moment is you realize that the banks are so corrupt that they're going to find workarounds so that they don't fail even when they do. Like they, they manage to like, right, like you the, know, they manipulate the, like the rating system so the, that the, like the, the, the mortgages or whatever are still rated. They high do, yeah, they, they don't lose they don't lose their value even though they're they've lost over like fifteen or twenty percent of their initial value at that point. It's the movie's ultimate point is that money is make believe. Like it, yes. it it doesn't exist and the rules are created and altered at will like a game of Calvin Ball by a select yes. group of people. Yeah, and so Christian Bale doesn't quite understand the human factor. So there's like a part where right. he's like, "What is happening?" and he doesn't realize like it's corruption. It's pe that was the thing he didn't factor in. He was just looking at the numbers, mm -hmm. and yes, the numbers by the numbers he was right. Um, so like I love that aspect of it because again, it's showing how all these different people look at this information and process it like steve carell who if you look at the actual guy he's based off of sounds exactly like he sounds which is it's got he has that ridiculous like new york accent um <laughs> he's a really fun character but yeah. yeah like he's like horrified by it and he's cynical he's the opposite where he's like it's like he's and i don't, I don't know how similar this is exactly to the actual guy but he's almost an activist um he's within the system obviously so he's not that much of an activist but he like hates it he hates everything he hates the system he he's like in it to like fuck over the people who do wrong and so they have him like stand mostly on principle so he's like the way other side where it's like he is like he says certain things where he's just like he believes it because like he believes that it's true that it's going to burst because he fucking wants it to happen. You know, like that's sort of his attitude is like, he believes in the worst of everything. Yes. Uh, and then you have Ryan Gosling, who's just greedy. And so like he gloms onto it because he just is getting extra insight. Like, and there's a few people like that. There's people working with Brad Pitt. They just want to get rich and they just see a good opportunity. Right. So they I, run I, the I, full I like the, I really like the two young guys too. We kind of didn't mention yeah. them. They have their they're sort of like the fourth main character. They're sort of paired together as a main character. Um and they're working with Brad Pitt who's this off the grid dude who used to be a finance legend. Um but they get really excited when they fall into this. Um but as they go th they they get poisoned by like are they not poisoned by it, but they they get soured to it. Like they come yes. out of it like this is awful, and they they try to they they try to sue the the people who give the the mortgages their ratings a, after the events of the film yes. unsuccessfully. Like they they yeah. were they tried to like right the wrongs that they saw and were just not able to. Well, you know what they they do a very smart thing with that. Steve Carell, one of his 
one of his character traits is that he will he walks into a group therapy session and just takes starts talking he takes phone calls in the middle of rooms where it's rude to do so did you notice that they have one of those guys do the exact same thing at the end and they're they're almost implying like the yep here's your future man like yep. you're going to become steve carell essentially like they're turning him into the same character um so i really liked that about them just getting more and more cynical of the system yeah uh the um by the way brad pitt's in this as we mentioned <laughs> which sure i think is. actually answers the question of why this was shot the way it's shot i think one of the reasons they got so many actors is probably the mockumentary style because it probably uh, cut their budget, right? Yeah, very easy to film. You, yeah. you film people on their own time. Most of these actors were never in the same room with each other. Right. You just say, okay, we got Brad Pitt. Let's grab him. Let's do this. This movie has everybody down to even... It has cameos before we knew they were cameos. It right, has like, fucking... Like fucking Steve Carell's team is Jeremy Strong, uh, Hamish Linklater, who's the priest from, from Midnight yes, Mass. Yes, fucking Midnight Mass is in this. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Um, his, uh, everybody on his team is somebody. Who's the other person? Shit. I don't know. Karen Gillan is, is fucking... Karen um, Gillan is randomly one of like the SEC in people, In a I Vegas think. pool? Yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing here? Um, yeah. It's uh, oh, and yeah, uh, Jeremy uh, Strong. Rafe Spall. Rafe Spall is the other member of Steve Carell's team, right? And Jeremy Strong is just trying out for fucking Succession. Um, yeah, yeah this he's a movie, very different character, but yeah, yeah, fucking uh, yeah. I guess um, who was it? I think Conan O'Brien was originally cast for Brad Pitt's character, something wild like that. Wow. Um, Steve Carell, the only reason he's in this is because of Foxcatcher, which makes sense. Like, he's still kind of doing a... He's doing a little bit of Michael Scott in this. Um, a little but bit, just I guess, no self-awareness in social situations. Yeah, McKay sort of, like, he wasn't going to cast him because he thought of him as a comedic actor. And apparently Fox Foxcatcher made him go like, oh, okay, let's let's get him. He's he's great. So I'm glad they oh, did uh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. You meant in Foxcatcher. That he's well, no, still both, that he's both. still a little Michael Scott. Yeah, he's, he's more still Michael Scott Mi and Foxcatcher. Yeah. I think in I think in both. I think this was when he was still had to be a little Michael Scott in serious roles, so we would trust it. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah, I, I get um, what you're saying. Um, and then Ryan Gosling, who's big at the time, but he wasn't that big. He, you know, he's arguably gotten way bigger. I would say. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, like yeah, he was like a big name, but he was still kind of on the rise. Yeah, McKay is just nailing it with the fucking cast here. Um, and so, yeah, it's basically these characters realizing this thing simultaneously or like getting information from each other. Christian Bale is seen as the first person to realize it, but other people seem to realize it not having to do with him. Uh, and then they go and they look into it and yeah. they realize that the housing market is completely fucked. Well, it's like, like they don't even realize it's not, it's not nearly as bad. Like, I don't think even Christian Bale realizes how bad it is compared to other characters. Right. Yeah. It just, because like you said, he's not considering the human aspect of it. And it's, I yeah. just wanted to say, like you pointed out earlier, how they all look at it. They all approach it from different angles because they have different beliefs or different goals. It's also like they all independently, come to it the same way like through the same sort of ways like christian bale finds right. it because he's doing all this data and oh and, and steve carell's team actually gets it because they get a wrong number right yes which i don't actually know if that was true to be honest they said in the um, movie it was yeah like that, was, again, one, that was one moment so, where gosling says that happened yeah every time they say that happened that i looked into it was true so i i do trust them that yeah they that probably happened um and uh but it doesn't matter because we're also talking about like this is the thing where it's like it's really easy to talk about this as a documentary but it's very it's it's important to know it's not like, it yeah, really it, you're, is yeah you're right I'm, I'm falling into the trap the way i'm thinking about it but like that's it's very deliberately constructed in that way <laughs> so. right because it's also constructed like a documentary but it 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 manages to take these true stories. Like, for example, like I said, when they start discovering, like, well, how fucked is it? They go to the houses to see, and they talk to the people selling the houses. And, like, for example, they depict those people as, like, major douchebags. Oh, yeah, one of them is like, Billy Magnuson. Exactly. And, and another early, like, 
cameo before that was a cameo. And it's like, there's no evidence of that. You know what I mean? Not to say they weren't, but there's like, they're making these characters up a lot of them, but they start realizing that down, like people are just selling terrible fucking mortgages and deals to people. Right. Um, I'm sure most of the people who, and that's, that's also kind of maybe a disservice be, be, in in terms of like kind of the way the movie moves uh, is constructed as a documentary, it sort of lulls you into thinking. Um, well, most of the, I, I'll trust that most of this is probably true, but like presenting them as being like Billy Magnuson as like a douchebag frat guy, the reality is probably more like it was probably older, middle aged or older, experienced real estate or brokers or or actually not real estate brokers. This would be financiers setting up the mortgages. Right. It's, it's probably people who look like you would picture a banker looking like. Yeah, exactly. We just More, don't it's, know. It's, yeah, it's so it's because the behavior is so outlandish and like the the loans they're giving are just so bad. And like the big problem with it, which I think there's legislation against it now, there's a limit on it, but it was adjusted rate mortgages, right. uh, which you get in at a, at a low, low rate. Um, and then after a certain amount of time, it goes up. Uh, your payments all increase. Um, and the way a lot of these deals were structured is the payments would suddenly increase by several hundred percent. Um, right. And that's what caused the the collapse is all of a sudden people couldn't pay their mortgages because they'd all gotten these houses on mortgages that had low payments for initial two or three or four or five year periods suddenly increasing um, to astronomical levels that nobody could afford. So everybody defaults. That's what Christian Bale predicts. He says, like, in 2007, these yeah. are all going to go up. That's when they all went up. That's how he crack. sees it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's man. Right. You, but I, hadn't, it, yeah. I, hadn't thought, I hadn't thought about that aspect of presenting them like douchey frat guys because it's like a, a douchey frat mentality or like, like it's a mentality we associate, just like the, the greed and completely not caring about other people. Right, um, and that's the same point where Michael Moore would interview those people. Yeah. Like, in the documentary version, Michael Moore, you'd have a shot of him going around these neighborhoods that are empty, right? Like, maybe they'd get a a, a shot of an alligator or a crocodile. I forget which one it was. It's an alligator um, in, in a pool. pool. Yeah, that's yeah right. like, they'll, they'll show people going like, well, you're saying my tenant or my landlord hasn't paid the rent? Um, those are all moments they do in here in the exact same way a documentary would, except it's all reenactments and it's all... Um, and so like, I guess I, I, yeah, I want to point that out because the thesis of the movie is ultimately this battle between is it ignorance or is it evil? Right. Um, and it's really easy for them to convince us that it's evil when they're depicting all the characters as being clearly sinister for the most part. You know what I mean? Um, that helps with their thesis by showing characters being like major pieces of shit right yeah. where like you could argue is this obviously the people at the very top were evil meaning the people at the very top knew probably what they were doing to some extent right but no one wanted the, the bubble to burst so like there's this idea and you can see this with any bubble well, and right? that's, he ends it by making that argument too that the bank's knew it but just but they didn't give a shit you're right they were gambling on they would just get bailed out which is what they did but sorry continue right oh which i think is true i think the people at the top the very richest know this stuff but i think the people in the middle they don't want the bubble to burst because they all get fired right so it's way well, you're more just, it's when you're a part of the system at the it's like it's showing uh, you I can't see anything but what's in front of you exactly right? like i haven't seen andor but that's how andor has been described to me as like yeah, the, great. the empire moves along, but it's like all these like mid-level empire people who are just, you're just going to work and doing a job. And if your job is to like unscrupulously sling out these mortgages, because all the numbers keep going up and everybody's patting you on the back, then that's what you're going to do. Right. You're and not you assume really that thinking about it. Yeah. Right. And you assume that there's other things at work, right? You assume like, oh, it'll be fine. I'm sure they have contingencies for all the stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're mm -hmm. you're blindly doing your part, assuming that the whole system is functioning. Um right. but it's not. And so like they do they do entertain that idea too, right? Like they have the people whenever they talk to, they talk to the people who give out the ratings and they they basically are essentially being bribed to give out good ratings. And they're like, "Listen, if I don't do it, they're just going to go down the street to my competitor." Yeah, another another great cameo, that's Melissa Leo. Who's that? She um, looked familiar. She's the the mother from the fighter and also Red State. Oh shit. 
Oh yeah, it is. You're right. Yeah. Sorry, I just it just pinged. Yeah. Um, so many fucking roles. So like, yeah, they they do go both ways with that, but I do think they they get to choose because of the what the method of their reenactments, right? Although yeah. I am. I do also agree with them. That's the thing. I agree that most people were probably a cog in a larger thing that they assumed was working. And the people at the very top knew that it wasn't working and that it didn't fucking matter because they were getting rich. Yeah. Um, and I think that's most bubbles. For yeah. The most we've seen part. it. We've seen it happen so many times already. So yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that that's, that's, yeah, that's the movie. Basically they go, they, they realize it's as, it's it's it keeps getting worse and worse and worse right like the um how bad it is where it's like they think it's they think it's like oh this is bad and then they start like there's the fucking it's again it's also hard to describe there's the like the weird like triple a oh um, yeah it's yeah like it's packages just... that are actually a bunch of shitty ones merged together that then people are betting on the outcome of people betting on and so on so that there's like a billion dollars on one of these alone that's right like that's, to... that was like one of the most shocking pieces of information and yeah. i again assuming it's true like there's not a documentary <laughs> Right, but well, the movie I think that makes shit the, is true. Yeah, the movie makes the argument that I assume isn't again. I'm, but I'm assuming, but it makes the argument that uh, demonstrating that essentially a single two hundred twenty thousand dollar mortgage could have as much as a billion dollars of investment tied up into it because right. of all these packages and triple A and double A and and you know all of all the ways all the different uh, CODs I think they call them, um, right. It, yeah, all, all the so. different ways that banks package up loans and sell the debt to people. And then it's just it's this complicated web of of how loans work. And it's 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 nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> yeah. it, it's the same thing with student loans. It's the exact same thing with student loans. Right. It's this realization that there's just this huge, weird grift happening around us no. that all these people are taking a lot of money and betting on some really abstract, weird, made up shit. Um, and I do think that's the stuff of the movie that that's why, like, ultimately, again, it's it's hard because I'm like, I, I want to say the ends justify the means. Right. Where it's like, I think that's a really important thing to point out to people and people have more and more realized it like money is fake. It's bullshit. We made it up and yeah. we do ridiculous things with it. Yeah. It's but the way this invented. movie. Yeah. I think the things that this movie is inventing are the more cinematic things like they do like the two guys we're talking about with brad pitt like lord knows how much any of that was true like for example they do i think they they specifically point out that they didn't find the information in yeah. the lobby in the movie of, they find ryan gosling's presentation folder in the lobby of of bear stearns or one of the investment banks they go to to try to get a seat at the uh, big table um, right. but I think they, they tell us well we didn't actually find it in the lobby this is just more cinematic right and i know why they did that because that's not the cinematic part in my opinion because i think what that scene represented is that also is the same scene where they're kicked out of the lobby right they yeah. don't even they can't even be in their lobby and it's to show how like they're young idealistic they just want to fucking seat at the table as they keep saying and they can barely get in the lobby and their arc completes when not only at the end do they get in the lobby, but they can just go up to they the just offices. Walk to the floor, yeah. Walk to the and trading it's just, floor. It's such that's such a clear arc, right? Of like a hero's journey. And, and then they, they go they up there. They get there and it's a it's a sham. It's busted and it's it's gross. Yep. And they say, Wow, is this it? And yeah. that's to show that very clear arc. Yeah. Um and I'm willing to bet a lot of that is you know extremely changed you know yeah it's that's show, pretty sorkin it's pretty sorkin it's very sorkin and then the constant parts where um Carell and uh, several characters just sort of say out loud the rant right yeah. like him at the end being like they're gonna get a bailout like he realizes it and then him and him saying like, oh, I know what they're going to do. They're going to blame immigrants and poor people. Um, and it's like, he's right because he has that. We know because we know. Right. Because this movie came out in 2015. Right. <laughs> like, but did 
Steve Carell, the person he's based off of, say something like that? Or is he just another sleazy kind of banker type? You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. does he actually, would he, you know, he seems to just be putting that on the characters. Like, he's decided that Steve Carell is the character to say all the good stuff. But right, they, like, he's decided that this is the virtuous character. Exactly. Um, and it's like, yeah, but did he say any of that shit? <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't, you know? I'm, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's, it's all to say that, like, I don't think they changed what happened. They're just, they're anal- what they're, how they're analyzing. Like you said, that they created protections to prevent this from happening. The movie doesn't say that at the end. The movie goes hard cynical in that. Yeah, like, I think I, I I I would need to look, I could be speaking entirely out of my ass, but no, I, I I I read some stuff saying that the movie omitted like laws that were passed. I know um, they I know they definitely it. tinkered with the adjusted rates. Like that was yeah. Right, and that isn't to say that there isn't won't be another fucking way f- for people to get fucked over. You know what I mean? Like No, there'll just be um, some other rule that gets invented so that a loophole can exist. You know, it's just, you know. Yeah. It's whack-a-mole. It's yeah, it's whacking off those moles. Yeah, whacking Absolutely. the moles off. <laughs> um, and then of course they do the lightly terrifying thing to say that Christian Bale's character is looking into water at the end. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. um, I would argue to be slightly optimistic. They they also introduce the idea that he doesn't know everything, right? No. He doesn't understand the human component in, in these equations. Um, that said, he's not wrong. He's not wrong to look into water. That's probably going to be a big problem. That's going to be a, that's going to be a huge problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But um, um, this is also, by the way, based off a book written by the author of The Blind Side, a book that turned out to be a little bullshit. A little bit bullshit, yeah. Yeah, that's so also why, important like, to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah. This is why I'm I'm looking at this and going like I fully believe in what this has to say, and I, um, by all accounts, it was pretty accurate. But like, it it's, it's hard a, to yeah, it's, it's a bad it's, habit. But luckily, right. we didn't go down this road. We haven't made too many of these, you know. No, and that's a good thing. Yeah, Um, because this I can see this style of filmmaking becoming very irritating. Like I like I said, I felt like it started to tip even in Vice, which was the very next film he did. Like, is that done like this? Not entirely. Vice is Vice is done much more like a narrative, but it still it's it still feels like like a mixed media presentation. Right. Yeah, and overall, I just think it's it's Sorkin for the new era. Meaning that, you know, in the 90s, Sorkin was cutting edge, right? And now you look at his work and you go like, it's kind of adorable, you know? Um, it's still like... Yeah, it's quaint. It's quaint. Like, I believe in a lot of the stuff, but it's very idealistic. And I wonder how much of this will be that, you know? This feels like a more, like, edgier, more, honestly, cynical Sorkin. But it still has those moments, and it still has a little bit of that wish fulfillment. Same with Succession, you know? Succession, which you, you've seen the first episode, so I'm not spoiling anything. It's basically about a very rich family who are very miserable, um, who are a mess. And it's this almost wish fulfillment of like, don't worry, rich people are sad. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. I mean, I still want money. <laughs> yeah, money would I still st- make a lot of my problems go yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. Which, again, the movie isn't, or the sh- that show Succession isn't like contesting that. It's just, it feels very light. Wish from Pillman pandering to me, like my beliefs specifically, like far left progressive beliefs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why I'm always like a little weary of it because it's like, you know. When I'm 60, will this shit be seen as quaint? Will it seem be seen as idealistic? Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 tough for this movie because it is so tied to the the the. It's so tied to being factual. Yeah, like the movie's impact depends on it being true. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Which is a, it's a scary thing. I've seen yeah. other movies do that. Where you realize, like, if 
I, I once saw a short film that was like that. It was framed like a documentary and it was a really fascinating documentary. And then I later read that it was completely fictional. And the problem was that it wasn't fascinating enough to be fictional. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that sort of thing where it's like... It wasn't interesting enough to be fake. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, oh, I wouldn't have watched it. It's like, this. oh, you did a bad job. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I've seen different things like that where it's like once you realize like, oh, the thing the thing they're doing that you thought was real isn't, um, it, it's not suddenly it it has very it has way less value i don't know it's like i i it's like if someone tells a a story and you realize the story is made up as they're telling it suddenly the story doesn't matter if it's like if you thought it was real so like this is very similar which is like a lot of the big moments of this movie are like oh i can't believe it you know yeah um and now it's it's being it's being shocked at how yeah, it's 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 being it's being shocked and outraged. Right. And it all depends it, on the information. It, it all depends on it being true. Right. It's a lot of Twitter now where someone will share something that'll say like <laughs> Biden si- signs a law saying that you can eat babies. Jeez, you can't make this shit up. And then you look in and you're like, "Nah, I, you you literally can make it up." Like it's that. Like the movie is incredulous with its in- information, so that information better be fucking real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As far as I can tell, it is, but good for good for them. Yeah, I'm just glad like the Daily Wire doesn't get a hold of this tactic. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, because uh, this can be this is a really easy way to lie with fine print. Yeah, being like, well, it's a movie; it's fictional. That's yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm 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 glad it did it didn't um, catch on. <laughs> like for I sure, said. Uh, this 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 type of movie would get really tiring. Yeah, but it is a very good movie. It it does a good job at explaining the things it needs to explain in very fun ways. Yeah, um, it, it's 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 frenetic uh, in a way that's unexpected. Right, like because this topic I'm, is so dry. Right, like I'm coming down on this film not because I didn't like it; it's because I liked it. Right, because I could be easily manipulated. Right, by this it. movie could dupe me. So yeah. Um, and like, yeah, Michael Moore is, you, you, yeah, he's very similar with that where like a lot of his stuff immediately dupes me. And then you read about it a little more and you go like, man, I wish, I wish he wasn't trying to be so dramatic. Like I wish he didn't fudge certain things for drama. Yeah. It's unnecessary. Yeah, for sure. Although this is necessary. Right, because this is literally a drama. This is yeah. <laughs> a dramatization. <laughs> because that's the other thing. Ultimately, I think the ends do justify the means because had he not done it like this, it wouldn't have been done at all. Um, I think that's probably true. It would be really, really hard to adapt something like this and make it as weirdly fun as it is. It's very entertaining. Yeah, you know what? He desperately needs to make one of these four. Uh, and when I say desperately needs, I mean he should have made it 30 years ago. Uh, one on climate change. Climate change desperately needs this treatment. We don't need, you know, remember when Al Gore made a documentary on it? <laughs> yeah. And he had the opposite problem as this, which is like, oh, Al. Which literally is a multimedia presentation. Yeah. The fuck are you doing, man? He should have teamed up was adam mckay and they could have they could have made a banger um and well, we I mean, really need something like that he he did man he gave us don't look up i didn't see that does don't look up stop and give you climate science though no see that's what i mean is i want i want adam all right adam mckay i know you're listening make a movie about exxon and shell covering up their knowledge of climate change in the 70s and do it just like this. Have the story of like the sleazy executives, Ryan Gosling, perfect, perfect for that. Um, and just go through it, right? Yeah. Do it from no, the that's point a great of view of like the scientists. Yeah, that's what we need right now for a big short. And I know, again, it's a really dangerous format, but it's takes that boring Al Gore presentation of a boring, hard to understand subject and makes it digestible. And God, I wish there was more of that. Like you could still do a documentary, right? And then say, here's Margot Robbie explaining it. Like you could say, we're doing a documentary 
do it more like a documentary and still have the fun reenactments. Yeah, or that's like true. The, you could still do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see why not, you know? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, All Dave. Right, let's you, and, you and I do it. We don't need to wait for Adam McKay. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Damn. You had your time in the sun, old man. Yeah. It's our time now. <laughs> Your days are numbered, McKay. <laughs> uh, I, that's all I got to say. Yeah, about this I, I think I'm done talking about this movie. Ombre, thank you so much. Thank um, you. I'm glad I got to watch this movie again. This movie's fun. Um, so thank you. This yeah, was thank through. You. This was through our Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed, G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y, unemployed. Um, for five dollars a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts on there, like Tom and Jeff watch Batman, Fox Mulder is a maniac, Star Trek: The Next Futurama, Spiel Boys, uh, all of those, all of those, just five dollars a month. Um, for a little more, you can watch movies with us, uh, with us every Friday night. We have a Discord, a great community. Check that out. Why don't you? And we also have a store. Head over to GameFleetEmployed.com. You can find a link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You can have t-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. So slap your big short peepers onto that. Yeah. Um, God. And leave us a review. I want some big shorts. Man, we could use some big shorts, Dave. Yeah, looking like Kevin Smith up in here. We could be the, the sisterhood of the traveling shorts. Yeah. Just one us. big pair of shorts we trade back and forth. Uh, or like each of us in one of the legs. Yeah, like a sack race. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so many good ideas today. 